Well, normally I like to show you really beautiful, really exciting reveals, but today I'm going to reveal something that is really tragic. It makes me a little bit heartbroken. I know I have talked a lot in the past about topiaries that I have killed in um, kind of a cavalier way, but I am really distraught about these two in particular, and I want to tell you why. So first of all, let me let me rewind the clock. I don't know why these died. They were doing just fine. I didn't move them. I didn't traumatize them in any way. And interestingly, it happened just very suddenly, even after we had just had a really good rain. So it just goes to show that no matter what you do in terms of trying to control your environment and best practices in the garden, sometimes you know what happens and in this case it did so let me show you the sad reality of my very prized dead lavender topiary and you can see how long I had it by the girth of its trunk Stuart can you show them a marvelous trunk and I I don't know what happened to it. It was fine one day and the next it wasn't fine. Maybe I should have moved it. I can go back and play what if, but I'm really not sure why. I'm gonna give it one more chance to make sure that it's really sincerely dead and I'm gonna cut it back, oh, to the point where I know I'm really getting into dead wood and see if maybe it will try to sh throw out some last gasps of little lavender fronds, but I don't think it's going to. I'm heartbroken because I've had this one for a long time. That said, lavenders in Oklahoma, whether in the ground or in pots, in my experience, in my garden, just are not that long lived. So I'm trying to take a kind of a zen perspective about it all but I just want to show you that stuff happens and we do our best but sometimes we just can't control mother nature and disasters happen now look at these gorgeous rosemary's right here and if you guys have not checked out LVTV I really encourage you to do that you can get 14 days free there's tons of great content and some of what we discussed there was how to start cuttings um, and how to root cuttings to turn them into topiaries. We did it with my friend Monica and all of these guys right here, all of these, let me get out of the way so Stuart can show you, all of these fabulous rosemaries were all cuttings that Monica grew for me with her um, magical ways and that's all on LVTV. You really want to check check it out if nothing else enjoy it for 14 days so you can get the, her magic tricks so these are gorgeous and these happily are still healthy but I have one that is not healthy and this one makes me very sad so it makes me especially sad because this is a new form I was really trying to cultivate this very tall thin conical shape like this one here and I had two of them. They were happy together. They were twins. I was imagining how wonderful they would look when I brought them in uh, over Christmas time, how I would use them as centerpieces when I entertained. And then this one, I came out one morning and inexplicably, it looked like this, as if it hadn't been watered, which it had. Again, I don't know what happened. It just all of a sudden, um, instantaneously almost died overnight. Now, these were especially prized because they were serving, first of all, they were members of my topiary family. I'd had them for a really long time and I had grown them from little pups. So I had become quite attached to them. And also because this one this rosemary was kind of part of a matched set, so that made me really sad. Um, I am going to see my friend Monica here pretty soon, and I'm hoping that she has some more starts that she can sell me so that I can grow another tall, thin columnar one like this. Now, you may ask, 
why don't I do it myself? Well, I have in the past and I can do it, but I just don't have as much room as she has. I am already overburdened with all of my potted plants, much less needing more to start. So she gets them going for me. She has a greenhouse and then she brings them to me uh, when they are a little bit more mature. I am hoping that this fall sometime, she's gonna come and visit my garden. If you're an LVTV insider, you'll get an invitation and she'll visit uh, my garden and she'll have scented geraniums and hopefully some starts, topiary starts like this to sell. So it's, it's really heartbreaking to me. Um, I won't let this one go to waste. What I'll do is take it out of its pot. I will be happy to have another aged terracotta pot. I'll cut it off at the base and then I'll throw it on a bonfire or I'll use it for um, shish kebab or something like that. I will definitely make sure that it leads, um, it, it, it has a good passage on its way out in some form of a funeral pyre because like I say, I'd become really, I'd become really attached to this one. I have other topiaries that I'm gonna be talking about in great length because it's great topiary time right now. September is great topiary time. There's still lots of good strong light. They're very happy. They're still putting on active growth. So I'm gonna do a whole long episode on myrtle topiaries, my scented geraniums, and how that collection is coming along and new ways that I have found to cultivate them. So lest you think that it's just always uh, sunshine and butterflies in my garden, it's not. Tragedies happen, I am kind of heartbroken but I am resilient and I will bounce back from this and it certainly in no way dissuades me from continuing to cultivate my beloved topi.